Hi friends, it's Monica and today I'm going to be sharing my most anticipated summer releases. So first off, I do want to apologize for not uploading for a few weeks. I've been really busy with summer school and I didn't have time to make a video. So I'm going to make it up for, I think this will be a semi-long one. So let's just jump into my most anticipated summer releases. So the first book I want to share is The Fi The Night by Bridget Kimmerer and this is releasing September 14th. And this fantasy book caught my eye because I did read Bridget's previous series, The Curse Breakers Trilogy, which is A Curse So Dark and Lonely. And I loved how she built the world of Emberfall. But in Defy the Night, we are in a new kingdom called Candela, which is falling apart because of corruption and there is a deadly sickness spreading across the kingdom. After taking the throne when his parents died, King Harrison and his brother, Prince Korik, they must keep their hold on power through ruthless ways. And in this new kingdom, the only way to have a semblance of peace is to, to obtain the cure of the sickness that is spreading across the land through gathering moonflower petals, which is the only known cure for the sickness, but they're really hard to get. And also in this story, we are following a girl named Tessa who works as an apprentice apothecary in this place called the wilds and Tessa is gathering these moonflower petals and handing out the cure to those who are not privileged but all her efforts isn't enough to help the kingdom and when these two storylines collide with Tessa and the prince Korik they have to team up together because of rumors that are spreading across the land that the cure of the sickness is not working anymore and that there are darker secrets being revealed from the kingdom of Condola. So that's kind of where the story takes off and I'm really intrigued and really excited to get to this one. Okay, so the next book I want to read is called Velvet Was the Night by Sylvia Mor Moreno Garcia and this one is releasing on August 17th. This author also wrote Mexican Gothic which I think was her debut novel last year in 2020. I have not read it yet, but this one also caught my eye because of the really pretty cover, so I'll give you a brief description about it. This is an adult thriller taking place in the 1970s in Mexico City, and we're following Mighty. And Mighty is a secretary who really enjoys the issues of this magazine or novel called Secret Romance, where there are stories of crime and passion. Meanwhile, political unrest and student protests are ongoing in Mexico City. Mighty is envious of her neighbor, Lorena, who is a carefree and beautiful art student. But one day, Lorena disappears and Mighty takes it upon herself to investigate what actually happened behind Lorena's disappearance. However, at the same time, there's someone else looking for Lorena. And this guy is a criminal competing task for his mob boss, let's say, and his name is Elvis. And Elvis watches Mighty from afar and becomes obsessed with her. <laughs> and they both do get close to discovering the truth together about Lorena, but they also find out that there are forces coming after them like hitmen, Russian spies, and government agents. And I've mostly read a lot of young adult thrillers, but I would like to branch out into more adult thrillers. So this premise really sounds super interesting and intriguing to me and can't wait to get to it. Okay, so the next one is one I've been waiting for for quite some time now, I think just over a year or so for book number four in the Witchlands series, which is Witch Shadow by Susan Denard. And this book does release on June 22nd. This series is one I've been following since the first book released tr called Truth Rich. I found that throughout the series, I fell in love with all the characters and all the character development that's been going on and I'll describe the world a bit. So the one thing about this series I love is the unique magical system because each character has a specific witchery so they could have fire magic, blood magic, truth teller magic, and so on. In the first book, Truth Witch, we are following two best friends who are like sisters to one another, Safia and Isult. Safia is a noble woman and she has a really unique witchery which is being a truth witch. So she is able to tell lies from truth and many powerful people want that ability. So people are hunting her down constantly. And as a result of that, Safi stays hidden. While Izut is from the Nomatsi tribe and she has yet to discover what her actual powers are. So I'm not gonna say anything about that. 
so let's just move on and these two best friends managed to get themselves into trouble with a guild master and his bodyguard who is a blood witch and who is then tasked with hunting the two best friends down so we also have the help of the royal prince Merrick who runs into Safi while at court and Merrick does want to help Safi and Azuth but other forces might find them first. I've read the series through twice now. It's full of action, budding romances, strong friendship, and difficult choices. Since it is releasing later on this month, I can't wait to get my hands onto it, but I do have a huge backlog of books I need to read, so let's see when I could even get to it, so I'll see what will happen. <laughs> and these next two following books have been released on June 1st, and the first one I want to talk about is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I feel like ever since I read um, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and The Six, I think I would just read whatever book she will write in the future. So what Malibu Rising is about is a historical fiction set in 1983 and it's set in Malibu, California. And this novel takes place over the course of one night at the infamous Rivas mansion. So the Rivas are a famous family. We have Nina who is a talented surfer and supermodel and we also have brothers Jay and Hud. One is a renowned surfer as well and the other is a photographer. And finally we do have the beloved little sister Kit and to be invited to their end of summer party is to be part of the exclusive crowd but with any family, they have their own fair share of problems. The night does start off normally as any summer party would, but with drama coming to a height for all of the siblings within the Riva family, the mansion is in flames by midnight. So some expectations I do have from Elder Rising is that there is a shocking twist to the story, of course, and will teach not only a lesson to the Rivas, but also to us readers. And I did get a audiobook of Malibu Rising so I was super super excited to get to this one. Comment down below if you have read any of Taylor Jenkins Reid's book and what your thoughts are on them. So this next book is a debut release. It's Ace of Spades by Farah Abike Edie Ming. I'm sorry if I mispronounce any author's names or characters names as usual. And this one is a YA contemporary thriller and it's described as a combination of Get Out meets Gossip Girl. So taking place at a private academy, we are following Devin and Chiamaka. They are the two top students within the school and they're picked as senior prefects and they're both running against each other for Valley Victorian. But after the announcements of the nominees for Valley Victorian, a mysterious and anonymous person called Aces begins to text Devin and Chiamaka. Basically what these texts contain are threat towards the two top students to follow whatever Aces wants them to do unless they want their deepest darkest secrets revealed. It quickly turns into a dangerous game as Aces continues to torment them and with their futures on the line, how far will this game go? And another thriller I'm really really excited to read. So this next one is called This Poison Heart by Kaylin Byron and it's being released June 29th. So this one is another YA book. It's a contemporary fantasy. And just also to note, I really love this cover. It's super pretty. And I did read Kaylin's first book called Cinderella's Dead, which I really did enjoy. So anyways, onto this poison heart. Brie Sayers has a special gift. She can grow plants from seed with only her touch. When Brie aunt dies, she inherits an estate up in rural New York that Brie and her parents decide to go stay for the summer. There, Brie hopes to better control her gift, but there's more to the estate than it appears, like an old apothecary as well as a walled off garden that contains deadly plants that only Brie and her family can enter. After strangers arrive on the doorstep and asking for strange elixirs that Brie has somehow the talent to make, there's also another group that wishes for an immortality elixir to be made, which can only be done through Brie. So this one speaks of deadly secrets and unknown family history that goes back several generations so it does really sound super interesting. And we have another debut author so this one is called We Are The Brennans by uh, Tracy Lang. 
And this one is releasing August 3rd. So this is an adult contemporary. This book explores the theme of shame and love surrounding an Irish Catholic family who were torn apart by secrets. It begins when 29 year old Sunday Brennan wakes up in an LA hospital after a drunk driving accident that she has caused. After recovering from her accident, she goes back to New York where her family is staying and there's a lot of contention there because Sunday did leave her family five years ago with little explanation or contact. Sunday wants to rebuild up her life but she realizes the people she left behind also needs her to heal themselves. But a man from her past is bringing trouble to her family's business which is a pub and it's on the brink of financial ruin. And the only way to resolve this is to reveal old family generational secrets. I'm super excited to get to this one and try to discover why all these secrets are having such a hold over this family and I really do hope to get to it when it releases. So this next one seems right out my alley. It's called These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan. It's releasing July 20th. It's a YA fantasy described as a blend between The Cruel Prince and A Court of Thorns and Roses. So yes, there are Fae in this one. We are following the character Brie who hates the Fae and doesn't want to have anything to do with them. But once her sister is sold to the king of the Unseelie court, Brie is on the move to get her sister back. She makes a deal with the Unseelie king Finn who wants her to steal three relics from the Seely court. And the only way Brie can enter the Seely court is to pretend to be a potential bride for Prince Ronan. As we can expect, Brie finds herself falling for both Finn and Ronan. We can expect this book to be a book full with fairy politicking, untrustworthy alliances, and seductive fae royalty. And the last one is a book I've mentioned before in my May TBR, but I did not get the chance to read it because I'm in a horrible reading slump right now and I'm mentioning Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim and this one is releasing July um, 6th. So I am planning to read this one. I do have an e-arc of it for my June TBR and I don't think I'll be uploading a June TBR because basically I'm moving all the books from my May TBR list to June so let's hope I get some reading done this month. So Six Crimson Cranes is centered around Shiori, who is the princess of Kyata. She holds a secret that can get her killed. She carries forbidden magic, and on the morning of Shiori's wedding day, she loses control of her magic that she usually has kept under wraps. Her stepmother, Reikama, she notices the magic and banishes Shiori from the kingdom. And her stepmother also turns her brothers into cranes and threatens Shiori to not speak of this to anyone, essentially making her a mute. And if she does speak of that to anyone, her stepmother will kill her brothers off one by one. From there, she is navigating a world full of conspiracies and an unable to tell truth from fiction. She must team up with her betrothed to find her brothers and also eventually accept the magic that she carries. And I swear I will finish this book this month. So that's all the books I have on my list for my summer 20. 21 anticipated releases and comment down below if you have any anticipated releases that I have not mentioned and that you're really excited for. So thank you so much for watching. Give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Thanks for watching again guys.